Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael Spencer and this is my Shoeshine Confession. Welcome, Michael. Hey man, how you doing? Good, good to have you. You too. Let's get these laces out, huh? Well, I'm nervous, me. man. I haven't been to confession in a long time. Oh, it's all good. Let's get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> so... Tell me a little bit about yourself, man, for the people that don't know who you are. Oh, man. So I'm a sports anchor at the uh, CBS affiliate here in Denver. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing sports on TV since 2010. Okay. And uh, always, always had a passion for sports. Okay. And there reaches a certain point in everybody where you can't play anymore. Mine came earlier than I had anticipated. Yeah. Um, you were a basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah. I played basketball and football in high school and okay. knew that I wasn't going anywhere with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were always passionate about sports yeah, from yeah, a young age. Yeah, and so um, figured I, I wanted to stick in the sports industry and, and going into broadcast has allowed me to do that. And um, so that's uh, kind of how I ended up where I am. And been lucky enough to to kind of bounce around and started in midland texas okay and uh covered friday night lights for for the football fans out there yeah um the movie the the permian panthers mm -hmm. and uh, the movie in the book i should say and then uh went from midland to amarillo and then uh amarillo to knoxville tennessee okay which was great man yeah. uh if, if you've ever been to tennessee you know they are passionate about their football yeah um and uh, got to cover the Vols for for a couple years, and then ended up here in Denver. And it's been it's been great covering the Broncos and the Nuggets and the Avalanche and yeah. the Rockies. It's a yeah, it's a it ton a, of fun. It's, it's a great a good year, man. Yeah, tell yeah, me a little really bit about was. the playoff run. What, uh, what were some of the challenges? What were some of the highlights? Playoff run was crazy. Yeah, uh, because it was every day. I forget how many days it was, but it was either the Nuggets or the Avs were playing. Um, and so it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. They were turning and, around the stadium within yeah, hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was a lot of fun to be a, a little part of that and, and see those guys have that success on the field and, and on the ice. And, um, that was, it was a blast, man. It really was, it was a ton of work, Yeah, but, but it was a ton of fun too. That's cool. So you like to have a lot of fun with the guys I noticed when you're interviewing them. What are, uh, what are some of your kind of strategies on, just kind of bringing out the uh, personal aspect or kind of more personality in, in your interviews? Well, to me, it's all about having fun, yeah. right? And and I think athletes get asked a ton of questions mm -hmm. uh, all the time, really. I mean, we get a lot of access to the guys. And so I think when you have the opportunity to ask them something they maybe haven't been asked before or mm -hmm. to do things a little differently, it can, it can bring out a personality in them. Um, and these guys, they've they've got personalities. They like to show that off. Yeah. It's just a matter of, of finding the right opportunity. True. Um, and so whether it's bringing in Pringles cans yeah. or asking off the wall questions, um, that's that's one of the things that I think is is a lot of fun about my job is is getting these guys away from their typical. Um, typical lives or, or typical questions and, and really kind of figuring out who they are and, and what makes them tick. Yeah. Um, and I think if you can do that, one, it's it's great for the viewer at home, mm -hmm. but two, you can establish a different relationship with them too. Um, Is there somebody that taught you that, like a mentor? You know, just kind of watching other people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that there was anybody specific, um, but just watching other people and, and trying to figure out, okay, how can I differentiate myself? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I make watching sports on CBS Channel 4 in Denver different than watching it on the other stations? Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's that's one thing that we're always trying to look for is how can we differentiate ourselves? How can we separate ourselves from everybody else? Yeah, yeah. And you got some camaraderie with the uh, some of the other channels too, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of those things. I'm sure you know everybody kind of experiences it to a degree. I mean, mm -hmm. you're all. You're all together all the time, really, um, especially in, in what we do. I mean, we're all sitting there. A lot of it is hurry up and wait because you're sitting there waiting for practice to end so that you can go interview the guys. Or you're sitting there waiting to get in the locker room. And um, so while the guys on, on the other stations in town 
might be competitors in in the sense of the word that you know obviously we we all are vying for eyeballs and vying for people to watch our newscast yeah um but you got to have some camaraderie with them because you see them maybe more than you see your own family exactly uh, yeah, and Probably so same yeah with them. yeah exactly um and so yeah i mean you're you're waiting in the airports with the guys to hop on the plane and uh travel to wherever the game is so you got to have that camaraderie, I think. And uh, while there's a competitive edge to everybody, uh, we all we all pretty much get along. True, that's good. So when you were growing up, who was one of your favorite athletes or coaches um, that really kind of uh, drove your your interest in in sports? Man, it started when I was young. Uh, I wanted to be a Cowboys uh, fan. Yeah. Uh, I grew up a Cowboy fan. Wanted to be a Cowboy player. Yeah. Um, I can still remember like Halloween in full Dallas Cowboy garb. Yeah. I was probably like eight years old. That's what started it. Big Aikman fan. Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, Troy Aikman fan. Charles Barkley was one of my one of my one of my early favorite athletes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in San Antonio, mm -hmm. and. Charles played the Spurs a lot, and I was that kid that wanted to be like, I don't know, the jerk and yeah. root for the other team for sure. and you not root, root for the hometown yeah, team for sure. and just be different than everybody. And so um, Charles was playing for the Suns back then and, and fell in love with him and followed his career to when he went to the Rockets and um, and then developed an affinity for, for North Carolina basketball. Okay. And so Vince Carter was one of my big, big favorites growing up mm -hmm. and uh, had the full Raptors uniform and uh, was a big, big Vince Carter fan. And so nice. just kind of followed their careers. Yeah. And, Did you ever get a chance um, to meet any of them? I guys? haven't had a chance to meet them, unfortunately, no. no. Oh, um, oh, man. I don't know. See, it's always one of those things where, like, I talk to athletes every day, right? But if I saw that guy, mm -hmm. I wonder if I would freak out, like yeah. freeze out, you know? Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, and I think that's that's what's so funny is like you, for me, I'm around athletes a lot, and and you kind of lose that perspective um, as as a fan. But if mm -hmm. I saw those guys from my childhood, I might freeze up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you always <laughs> seem to carry that uh, that excited energy into your broadcast too. Um, I mean, are there any times that, that you have to kind of pump yourself up and, and what yeah. is, what's kind of your pre-work rituals? So, so this is, since it is a shoe shine confession, yeah. I gotta, I gotta be honest. So it started when I was in college, right? And I was doing the morning show. And so it was like six o'clock in the morning, which for a college kid is super early. Mm -hmm. Um, and the two anchors, uh, I'd, I'd gone and done the sports cast and they, they were like, Hey, look. You're, you're really good, but you're kind of boring. Hmm. And I was like, all right. Um, and I, and I, I, I take criticism or, or critiques because I think you have to, right? It's, sure. it's kind of like coaching. Yeah. It makes you better. And they were like, you're, you're really good at what you do. You're solid, but you're kind of boring. You're kind of putting us to sleep a little bit. Huh. So you need to do something to pump yourself up. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And they were like, whether it's listening to songs or whatever, do something to get yourself pumped up. Mm -hmm. So so at that time, this was like, I don't know, 2009, maybe early 2010, Miley Cyrus Party in the USA was oh, really yeah. big. Yeah. This is this is my confession. That's a jam. Oh man! So 5:30 in the morning in the sports office, I'm cranking "Party in the USA," awesome. and that got me hyped. That's awesome. And it and it got me super excited to go out there, and um, that was one of those things where I kind of like, okay, this is what I need to do. Now it graduated, and eventually I got to the point where I didn't necessarily need it, but early in my career I needed that that hype, that pump up music for sure. um, to get going. And so like some of the Rockies when they, when they play a funny exactly, song. They exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you got your walk up song, sure. right? You're yep. walking up to bat and yep. uh, whether it's Charlie Blackman, I just want to use your love tonight yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, you got to have something to get you going. And that for me, that's what it was. That's and, cool. and I think that made a big difference because people don't want to watch, especially when you're doing sports, like mm -hmm. people are drawn to people who are engaging and who are excitable. Um, and I think that made a big difference in, in my career. Um, and so it, it kind of hurt to hear that I was boring, yeah. but to know that I could do something about that and, yeah. and, um, and really kind of make a difference. Yeah. It, it made a huge difference in my career. That's cool. Yeah. You got to be open to those criticisms, you know? Yeah. In order to yeah. And critiquing, sense. you got to take yeah. it the right way. Yeah. Um, and, and use it as an opportunity to get better. Mm hmm So what would you tell your younger self before you had kind of gotten into your career path? 
Oh man, I would tell my younger self that that working hard is probably the biggest thing that you can do, especially, um, I mean, I think it's that way in any career, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I used to, I, when I when I first started, I wasn't on air as much as I wanted to be, mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I needed to do something in order to get better, mm -hmm. um, and so what I would do, I would wake up and I would watch Sports Center or one of the other sports shows, and I'd watch it on mute. And I would call the highlights as I'm seeing them oh, on okay. television. That's creative. And so one of the biggest, like baseball was a big struggle for me. It was a big struggle to be energetic and entertaining during baseball highlights. Uh -huh. And so I would watch baseball highlights on repeat uh -huh. and just make up the names of the players if I couldn't recognize them immediately. Yeah. Um, and just start calling it. And, and it was awful at, st at first. Uh -huh. But I was doing that in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. And then when I started calling baseball highlights on the air, I was I was more comfortable mm -hmm. because I had done it and I didn't have to do that mm -hmm. right like but that was a practice that I kind of took on and adopted to just kind of make myself better That's cool. um, and so that when the red light was on and, and it was really time to do it I felt more comfortable doing yeah. it you put that metaphorical hat on yeah yeah went to town um, you know and I think I think work ethic, work ethic is is really important and mm -hmm. Um, you got to have that. You got to treat people the right way. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge, huge thing to do, um, you know, in, in any industry, because people look at the news, right? And, and you see me doing the sports, but there's so much that goes into that, yeah. whether it's the guys who are editing the video, mm -hmm. the guys who are shooting the video. Yeah, the production, um, team, yeah. Yeah, the production yeah. team, the guys who are making sure the cameras work. Um, you know, the guys who are doing the lights, the guys who are doing the audio, there's so much that goes into the three minute sports cast that a lot of people don't see. And having an understanding of what goes into that, having an appreciation of everybody who works on that, mm -hmm. it really makes a difference um, in, in not only what you do, but in the final product being a good one. Yeah. Because if everybody feels like they're invested, if yeah. they feel like, even though I'm maybe the face, mm -hmm. Or the guy you see on camera, if they feel like I'm invested in what they're doing and how they're doing it, then I feel like they're going to do a better job too. And it's it's that teamwork sure. that really allows everything to come together. Yeah, yeah, it takes an army. Yeah, 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 it really does. So I'm putting a second little coat of wax on the toes to make these puppies glow, and I can uh, put a little bit of darker color on there too to kind of accentuate that uh, patina. What you think so far, man? That look pretty. Shiny. Yeah, baby. Been needing it. Yeah. Yeah, these are great shoes. So you're a pretty fashionable guy. Did you... <laughs> have any help kind of finding uh, your your style or were you always kind of ever since a young age kind of no well? so what happened is i got married <laughs> okay and that changed everything because my wife was like all right you're not wearing this anymore you're not wearing this anymore here's what you're gonna start wearing yeah um yeah I, everybody i appreciate that everybody who who says like oh man love your style uh that's all my wife she okay. she'll help me pick out my clothes if i need her to uh now i feel like i've gotten better under her tutelage yeah. um and through some of that instruction but i gotta give a big shout out to my wife love okay. you babe yeah uh, and, uh, and appreciate the style there because cool. she has helped tremendously with right. that <laughs> well if she ever needs help over here we got some good people to help her out <laughs> so what i just did there was add a little touch of black and it kind of deepens the toe a little bit. Okay. I don't know if you can kind of see that. So you're adding a touch of black to a brown shoe. Yeah, yeah. All it's right. a, kind of a method that uh, some top shiners in the world do. Um, there's a, actually a competition out in London every year, and uh, a couple of the guys that won the last two years have kind of taken that, um, that method using a darker color to add a little bit of patina. Those are pretty. Yeah, man. Pretty, pretty. 
And there's a couple of ways to lace them up too. We can do uh, kind of the way that you had, or we can do a bar lace, which will just kind of show one across all the way up. Yeah, let's It'll do the bar lace. Cool. Let's mix it up. Cool. I'll slip them off. I got a shoehorn here for you too. Yeah, check this out. So I just do one. And since it's a flat lace, I kind of take more time with it. But do one all the way up from the bottom. Okay. And this little guy right here goes on a journey. And it's just going like a corkscrew. Oh, very nice. And there's a couple different ways to do this. You can actually kind of skip from one to the other to hide it so you don't see it back here. But okay. I always find that this is just the easiest way to do it. You know, it's funny watching men's fashion develop and whether it was socks mm -hmm. or shoelaces, yeah. you know, the different shoe, the different ways to lace your shoe. Yeah. Um, it's, it's gotten so creative and so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, with some Browns like this, even doing like a teal or a light blue, um, you could do a purple for, yeah. Make the, the laces rockies. pop a little yeah, bit. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Match it with your color squares. Uh -huh. Your, uh, pocket, pocket squares. squares. Yeah. So to loosen it up, I usually just kind of loosen the top two. Okay. And then kind of give that third one a little tug and then separate it a little bit like cool. that. And that way it makes it a little easier. And then to fasten it, just kind of start from the bottom and go up. Okay. It's just a kind of a cleaner look with this type of... Uh, how it kind of comes together yeah, out of view. Yeah, like no, that. for sure. Uh, the ones that have more of that saddle where this is kind of separated, I like to do it the traditional way. Okay. What you think, man? I like that a lot. Look at that. That's, That's a good look. Too. I can never do that. No, me neither. On, on the first, first try. try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky charm. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Absolutely. At least this other one up here for you. fashionable at CBS Ford Denver? Well, I would think so. Yeah. But who gives you a I haven't been given I haven't been given that crown yet. Nah. <laughs> so who's got the longest tenure at CBS Ford? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh you know, we got people that have been there for thirty plus years. Yeah. Um and uh, I'm trying to think on air. It might be Jim Bitterman, who's actually on his second stint, I believe. Oh, okay. At CBS for yeah. our main anchor. Yeah. Nice. He's um, the night guy, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's good. Mm -hmm. good yeah. Energy. Yeah. No, Jim's great. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's high energy. He's quick as a wit. Is too. he? Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. You guys got a good team. You know what's nice uh, about, about CBS for is there's a, a good like family feel to it mm -hmm. um and the the morale is really high that's good um and i think everybody's really invested into into what we're doing i think that makes a big difference that's cool um not just in the sports department but but in the news department as well that's good yeah, it all trickles down man yeah culture and organizations definitely make a difference in the everyday employees you know it's important mm -hmm. it's important for sure How do you feel, man? That's dope. I love that. That's a great look, man. That's a great look.